What's up, Dirt Junkies? I don't think my feet have ever had more fun on the trails than when I've been wearing the Innovate Terra Ultra G270. Stick around and I'll tell you all the things I love about this shoe, including this incredible color, as well as some things I don't love about it. Let's get into it. I picked up the Innovate Terra Ultra G270 after running in nothing but Ultra shoes for years because recently I've been less than impressed with the durability. I'll put a link to the video where I talk more about that up here as well as in the description below if you want to watch that as well. For now, let's talk about the Innovate Terra Ultra G270. These come highly recommended as another shoe with zero drop, a wide toe box, and the durability is supposed to be better than Ultra, so I knew that I had to try it out. But before I get into the things that I like and don't like about the shoe, let me tell you just a little bit more about it. As I mentioned, the G270 is a zero drop shoe, which means that the stack height at the heel as well as at the toe is the same, 12 millimeters. Innovate also says that it comes with a wider than normal toe box, meaning that your toe should have enough room to splay every time that you take a step. That's something that I really look for in a running shoe. I love the wide toe box and the zero drop, which is one reason why I stuck with Ultra for such a long time, even though I was having durability issues. A few other things that are important to know about the shoe are that it is a low stack height at just 12 millimeters and the upper is constructed largely of mesh. You can see that underneath the welded overlays. I do appreciate that Innovate does include those welded overlays on top of the mesh because I feel like that adds a lot of durability and some other benefits that we'll talk about later. So that's the upper. Let's talk about the outsole. It's made of their graphene grip, which they tout as the toughest, grippiest material that you can get on the bottom of a trail shoe. You'll notice that there are four millimeter lugs on the bottom, as well as these nice flex grooves to give you a little bit more agility, as well as some nice ground feel over uneven terrain. As far as the midsole goes, that material that really gives you the most amount of cushioning. It's made of what they call their zip foam. It's supposed to give you a nice bounce back as well as some nice cushioning, even though it's a low stack height at just 12 millimeters. So there's a quick run around the shoe. See what I did there? Let's get to what I like and don't like about the Innovate Terra Ultra G270. First, what I love about this shoe. The first thing that really comes to mind is that this shoe is just a blast on the trails. As I mentioned already, it's an extremely low stack height at just 12 millimeters. And because of that low stack height, you really have some great ground feel. And it's hard to explain the feeling that I get when I'm running or hiking with this shoe on. I really feel like I can feel the trail underneath my feet. In fact, this shoe is so fun to run in. I've been wearing it on several hikes where I just couldn't help myself but start running. I absolutely love running in this Terra Ultra G270. It's just a blast. Another thing I really like about the shoe is that despite the low stack height of just 12 millimeters, I still felt like it gave me nice protection from the ground underneath my feet. Trails are rarely perfect and well-groomed. You're often encountering roots, rocks, gravel, something like that that can really hurt your foot if it's not well protected. The next thing I want to mention is that this shoe performed very well in snow and rain. Although I hadn't planned to use it in snow because we aren't quite into winter yet, I wore these on a hike just this last weekend where we started at the bottom without snow, but by the time we got to the top, there was a lot of snow. And what I noticed is these welded overlays on the front and all the way around the shoe actually gave my foot quite a bit of protection from that moisture. This material seems to be waterproof and really prevented that snow and rain from soaking into my shoe. You can see that those welded overlays come just high enough on top of the outsole and the midsole to really give your foot some protection from water and snow that's about this high. I really appreciated that on the hike that I went on this last weekend. The next thing I'll mention is the grip. Now, Innovate makes a really big deal about touting this graphene grip outsole that they've put. I typically prefer a shoe that has a Vibram outsole because that's the outsole that I've had the best experiences with, but this graphene grip does really well. I've been able to test it in just about anything I think I might encounter, and it performed excellently in just about all conditions. We'll get to some where it didn't later, but in most conditions, this outsole was very grippy. I ran and hiked in dry conditions, loose dirt, loose rock, big boulders, snow, rain, just about everything you could throw at the shoe and the grip was fantastic. I think some of the reasons for that are you can see that there's some texture on the outsole rather than just having those lugs. I think that that really helps add some grip when you're encountering some of those sloppier conditions and you'll notice with the lugs on the shoe that they're not just one direction. You've got lugs going different directions and really provides a lot of grip 
no matter which way your foot is pushing off of the trail. I really like the grip of this outsole on the Innovate Terra Ultra G270. The last thing that I'll mention that I really love about this shoe is the color. Look at this neon green. Now, if neon green isn't your style, they do have some more muted colors, but come on, nobody's gonna miss you on the trails with these on your feet. You could even call it a safety feature. Nobody's gonna lose you at night if you're wearing the Innovate Terra Ultra G270 in neon green. Sweet. But it's not all as awesome as the neon green on this shoe. Let's get into a few things that I don't like about the Terra Ultra G270. First of all, and this comes down to personal preference, but it's something that's very important to me in the trail shoes that I use for both running, hiking, and backpacking. But the toe box for me just isn't quite wide enough. I'm used to a pretty wide toe box in my Ultra shoes. I really like that. I think my feet are a little bit wider than most anyway, but I like when the front of my foot has enough room for my toes to splay each time I take a step. It makes a big difference in my comfort both during and after my trail session, and so I really look for that in a shoe. Before I go into more detail on this, I will say that if you have a narrower foot or if a wide toe box isn't as important to you, this really isn't an issue. The toe box is a little bit wider than most running shoes. I could feel a difference between this and traditional trail shoes, but it's just not as wide as I would like. I could tell from my very first run with this shoe that the toe box wasn't quite what I needed, but I wanted to give it a chance to break in. After each trail session, I took a picture and pointed to where it was hurting. You, you can see in the pictures that it was usually right here on the inside of my big toe or right here on the outside of where my pinky toe is. And that's because my toes just didn't quite have enough room up here in the toe box to spread out the way that they wanted to, the way that they were used to. Now, I will say that that pain got less and less after each run. I think that's probably because I was breaking the shoes in, but I wonder also if it's because I'm just starting to stretch out the materials a little bit in the toe box area, which worries me because if they're stretching out too much, that means that it's a ticking time bomb as far as when these materials are gonna blow up just like my Ultras did. Interestingly, I found that if my trail session was early in the morning before it was hot, or if I wore in gingy toe socks, that I didn't get that same pain on either side of my foot. I don't know if that's because my feet weren't swelling or because with the toe socks, my toes still had room to move around independently. They weren't trapped in one sock, but that's just something that I noticed in the shoe. So if I only ever ran in cold conditions and lower mileage trail sessions, then this shoe might work but the toe box just isn't wide enough for longer trail sessions or for those hot training days. So that's something that's not going to work for me long-term with the Innovate Terra Ultra G270, but that's very much down to personal preference. So it might be fine depending on what you like. The next thing I'll mention that I didn't like is the grip. Now, I know that I mentioned this as a good thing about this shoe where I mentioned that the grip was fantastic in almost all conditions. One area that I noticed this shoe did not perform well that I was disappointed after reading all the hype about the graphene grip outsole was on wet wood. I really noticed on that snowy hike and run that I went on that if I was stepping on a wet root or a wet log that this shoe was slipping all over the place. I wasn't confident in my footing on wet wood with this shoe. I think that's a very common problem with other shoes. That's a very hard surface to get a good grip on. I feel like so far in the shoes that I've used, those that have a Vibram outsole have performed the best, but unfortunately this graphene grip outsole on the G270 just wasn't as good as I would like. So not good for running in wet conditions where you're going to encounter a lot of roots or logs. But other than that, the grip was great. And the last thing I'll mention that I did not like about this shoe is the price. The retail price on these is $160. My wife just glared at me because she didn't know that's how much I spent on these shoes. $160. I will admit that is the most I have ever spent on any shoe. Trail, dress shoe, running shoe, casual shoe, any shoe, that is the most I have ever spent on any shoe. $160 for these Terra Ultra G270s. That being said, it is a fantastic shoe. I feel like it will be very durable, but unfortunately for me, it won't be worth it because as I mentioned, I won't be able to wear it on those longer trail sessions. This shoe for me will be limited to shorter trail sessions and probably just during the winter months when it's a little bit cooler. Hard to justify spending $160 on a shoe that I can't wear more often or for longer sessions. Now, if you're just made of cash and $160 isn't a big deal to spend on a shoe, then this could be a fantastic option. 
option. But for me, that is a lot of money to spend on a shoe that doesn't quite have the wide toe box that I'm looking for. But as far as dislikes go, that's really it. The toe box isn't as wide as I would like. I wish that the graphene grip was a little bit better in wet wood conditions, and the price is just a little bit steep. Other than that, I really like the shoe. As I said, I think it's the funnest shoe that I've worn on the trails in years. It's just a blast. So would I recommend this shoe? Yes, if you're not looking for an extremely wide toe box and if $160 doesn't seem like too hefty of a price to pay for your trail shoes. So in conclusion, the Innovate Terra Ultra G270 is an awesome shoe. I love it. It's a blast to run in, awesome to hike in, performs really well in a lot of conditions. Unfortunately, it's just not the perfect shoe for me. That toe box is kind of a deal breaker, but it might be exactly what you're looking for. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And remember, life is better with some dirt in it.